In today's video, we are going to explore best Haruki Murakami quotes about life. Let's get started. Asking a question is embarrassing for a moment, but not asking is embarrassing for a lifetime. Listen, every object's in flux. The earth, time, concepts, love, life, faith, justice, evil, they're all fluid and in transition. They don't stay in one form or in one place forever. That things in life are fated by our previous lives. That even in the smallest events there's no such thing as coincidence. A revelation leaps over the borders of the everyday. A life without revelation is no life at all. What you need to do is move from reason that observes to reason that acts. That's what's critical. This life is nothing but a short, painful dream. Thanks to his guidance, I have made it through this far. Everything in life is metaphor. I knew life was pointless, but I couldn't give up. Life's crappy, no matter how you cut it. But if you look at it like that, we're all pretty much empty, don't you think? You eat, take a dump, do your crummy job for your lousy pay, and get laid occasionally, if you're lucky. Still you know, interesting things do happen in life. Your life's just begun and there's a ton of things out in the world you've never laid eyes on. Things you never could imagine. You're not a kid anymore. You have the right to choose your own life. You can start again. If you want a cat, all you have to do is choose a life in which you can have a cat. It's simple. It's your right. Another person's life is that person's life. You can't take responsibility. Time weighs down on you like an old ambiguous dream. You keep on moving, trying to slip through it. But even if you go to the ends of the earth, you won't be able to escape it. Still, you have to go there, to the edge of the world. There's something you can't do unless you get there. This world is a terribly violent place. And nobody can escape the violence. Please keep that in mind. You can't be too cautious. The same holds true for cats and human beings. And you really will have to make it through that violent, metaphysical, symbolic storm. No matter how metaphysical or symbolic it might be, make no mistake about it, it will cut through flesh like a thousand razor blades. People will bleed there, and you will bleed too. Hot, red blood. You'll catch that blood in your hands, your own blood and the blood of others. And once the storm is over you won't remember how you made it through how you manage to survive. You won't even be sure, in fact, whether the storm is really over. But one thing is certain. When you come out of the storm you won't be the same person who walked in. That's what this storm's all about. In this world, there are things you can only do alone, and things you can only do with somebody else. It's important to combine the two in just the right amount. I'm not totally mad at you. I'm just sad. You're all locked up in that little world of yours, and when I try knocking on the door, you just sort of look up for a second and go right back inside. We survived. You and I. And those who survive have a duty. Our duty is to do our best to keep on living. Even if our lives are not perfect. The darkness in the outside world has vanished, but the darkness in our hearts remains, 
virtually unchanged. Just like an iceberg, what we label the ego or consciousness is, for the most part, sunk in darkness. And that estrangement sometimes creates a deep contradiction or confusion within us. Things change every day. With each new dawn, it's not the same world as the day before. And you're not the same person you were either. We have an experience like a chemical reaction that transforms something inside us. When we examine ourselves later on, we discover that all the standards we've lived by have shot up another notch and the world's opened up in unexpected ways. The world of the grotesque is the darkness within us. Listen up, there's no war that will end all wars. War breeds war. Lapping up the blood shed by violence, feeding on wounded flesh. War is a perfect, self-contained being. You need to know that. In dreams you don't need to make any distinctions between things. Not at all. Boundaries don't exist. So in dreams there are hardly ever collisions. Even if there are, they don't hurt. Reality is different. Reality bites. Reality, reality. Taking crazy things seriously is a serious waste of time. Get a good night's sleep. That usually fixes it. Until that time I had understood death as something totally separate and independent from life. Death exists, not as the opposite, but as part of life. No truth can cure the sorrow we feel from losing a loved one. No truth, no sincerity, no strength, no kindness can cure that sorrow. All we can do is see it through to the end and learn something from it. But what we learn will be no help in facing the next sorrow that comes to us without warning. And you'll return to real life. You need to live it to the fullest. No matter how shallow and dull things might get, this life is worth living. I guarantee it. I spent 33 years as another man's shadow. I went everywhere he went. I helped him with everything he did. I was in a sense a part of him. When you live like that for a long time, you gradually lose track of what it is that you yourself really want out of life. If you can love someone with your whole heart, even one person, then there's salvation in life. Even if you can't get together with that person, in everybody's life, there's a point of no return. And in a very few cases, a point where you can't go forward anymore. And when we reach that point, all we can do is quietly accept the fact. That's how we survive. Most things are forgotten over time. Even the war itself, the life and death struggle people went through, is now like something from the distant past. We're so caught up in our everyday lives that events of the past, like ancient starts that have burned out, are no longer in orbit around our minds. But who can say what's best? That's why you need to grab whatever chance you have of happiness where you find it, and not worry about other people too much. My experience tells me that we get no more than two or three such chances in a lifetime, and if we let them go, we regret it for the rest of our lives. Irony deepens a person, helps them mature. It's the entrance to salvation on a higher plane, to a place where you can find a more universal kind of hope. When you are used to the kind of life of never getting anything you want, you stop knowing what it is you want. Please let us know your favorite quotes from these best Haruki Murakami quotes about life 
in the comments section. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel.